So, okay, good. Uh, shall we start again? Hey, open that. Okay, good. And yeah, so this is a course of the human resource management. And yeah, we are mainly talking about the managing people, mainly uh, managing people, and then we talk about the acquiring uh, before yes, uh, yesterday. And then today we will talk about a training and then appraising retention some things. Okay, and however, the long story short, we talked a lot about it, the recent changes of the human resource management and the people management way of doing. It, okay, and traditionally, people management or the managing people is just supporting the supporting supporting the managers management. Okay, throughout the providing the service of this kind of things. But however, recently. More fundamentally, the managing people way of doing and the paradigm is changing to the more strategy role. Strategy role. Okay. Uh, HR still do the functions, still do this kind of supporting functions. But however, the many of them are outsourced. Okay, that could be outsourced. However, what is the main function? What is the main core? What is the more core functions of the human resource management or the people management is? We dedicate and we take a lot of a strategy partner in order to serve to create, creating and sustaining the competitive advantage in order to solve the business problems, okay? Strategy partners, okay? And the competitive advantage, okay? That is the main purpose of the strategy management. Competitive advantage that stemmed from, that, that stems from People, people, okay. The competitive advantage, okay, according to scarce resource theory and resource-based view approach, and then the I introduced that my my idea about the multiple capital something. No matter what, that competitive advantage come from the people side, not money side. Okay, better than money side. That sustainable competitive advantage come from the people, okay? And then what kinds of people? No, there is no individual somebody, okay? But however, though, we recently talk a lot about the competency and more fundamentally, we talk a lot about talent, okay? We are not focusing on the individual one by one. We can't, okay? It depends because the situation is changing. So that later, just to giving a more attention to the individual characters, individual something, but however, we give more fundamental competency. What can you do? What kinds of people, what kinds of skills you have? What, kind, what kinds of work you can do? And then more potential like a talent. So that recently we are much more focusing on talent development, talent management, not just the individual management, okay? So that's a rough trend. HR, traditionally managing people, individual, somebody, okay, but no, not anymore. We are, we are moving to the strategy partnership, partnership, and then we are much more focusing on competency or the potential talent, okay? So mm, not individual management, not anymore, okay? So we are much more focusing on the competitive advantage, okay? So that is a rough idea of the recent changes of the people management. Okay, good. And then, so that is the reason why we give more attention in developing people, developing talent, developing competencies, and developing the organization, developing, learning and developing, okay? So then in order to make the development, developing people, okay? So we have a few number of the ideas, training and development, okay? We got the best potential. We got the best talent. We got the best people, okay? Good, nice, okay? Then almost immediately those kind of the identified potential, talent, high potential, and the best talent to somebody, they work and perform 
immediately when they got a job? Unfortunately, no. Okay. And we have a uh, we have we have understanding of this. According to the human capital theory, okay. So this is a traditional human capital development. Okay. So that is a performance plus minus in terms of the organization. Okay. And this is a human capital development. Okay. And what does that mean? So when first, when when an individual, when a person came to the organization at the first, okay, we should invest in the individual. We must train them. We must invest. We must develop these guys. That means we input. We input you. We spend our money. You are the cause, not a gener not a re revenue generator. Oh, ah, cost and revenue. <laughs> we, oh, we business. <laughs> we business think only revenue and cost. <laughs> okay, so until the someday you are the cost. Okay, so people are cost. That means we invest in people in developing. We invest in people. Okay. Good, and gradually the cost is decreasing, decreasing, and someday you are starting to perform. You are starting to perform and you are starting to creating the value for organization, okay? So that is plus revenue. So you are becoming a revenue center, okay? And then we hope you can create more revenue. And a few number of talent may create the tons of dollars revenue. It depends. However, first we need to invest here. Okay, that is a training and development course. Okay, good. And then generally, traditionally, can you guess what is the period of this time? Can you guess, Owen? Can you guess what is the period of this time until when you are the course not revenue? <laughs> I know if, for example, though you're a large bank, in your bank, until when <laughs> you are the course not the revenue? <laughs> how, many, how many days, how many months, how many years the company need to invest in people too? Make them work. Huh? Just guess. Um, One year? Okay. Huh? Two years? Okay. Two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that? Uh, give me the guy. Violet, then, huh? Sunny, then, okay. Hold on, Amber. Cherry? Huh? Just guess. One year? Okay, six months to one year. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Johnny, now it's good now. Johnny here. I'm doing it. We had done three years. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Ember. Amos. Amos. Okay. Mm, okay. Huh? Violet. One year. Okay. Mm, let's make average. <laughs> yeah, you are almost right. You are almost right. Okay. So average in average, that's around the two or three years. Okay. It depends. It depends on the industry. It depends on the industry. It depends on the situation. It depends on the different functions. Something. Okay. But however, the generally. It takes around the two or three years. Okay. Mm, two or three years. Okay. So then, what does that mean? It takes around, yeah. When we recruit that the new, totally new college grade, okay. So we need to invest around the two or three years to make them work. Okay. So that according to human capital, according to statistics. So that, do you know that the head on top, head on team? Head on team. Head on team. The, the HR. Head on team. Okay. So they're recruiting the best, the best 
best talent somebody. Okay. And do you know that though, who is the who is the major target of the head on the best talent? Uh, yeah. But however, the biggest money usually come from these guys. Who reach it to this? Who reach it this? And they are ready. They they are ready to perform. And they we and the, another another movie company don't need to invest in their money. Okay. And then absolutely, these guys, one of the main target of the head on. Oh, absolutely. So there is a, the best talent head on in something. That's one. However, mainly many of the head hunting companies are target these guys because of this. They don't need to invest. The another the moving company, moving company. They don't need to invest in this. They are worth trade. Ah, this is cost and revenue war <laughs> your business. <laughs> so then, okay. Ah, uh, the tricky or some ah uh, uh, the business minded companies usually recruit those guys who already have a two or three years of the job experience. That is the reason. That is the reason why we love to get the two or three years of the job experience, the guys. Why? We don't need to invest in this money. We don't need to invest in it. And then this is not cheap. Human capital theory. <laughs> uh, uh. So then, like this. Training and development is not an easy task, and it takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time. Okay, and the developing people is not easy. Okay, then mm -hmm, absolutely we can save this cost. Okay, and in this perspective, in this perspective, managers use have a dilemma. Okay, so then let's see what kinds of dilemma we have. Here, here is a question. Here is a ca traditional question. Traditional question. C oh, oh it's in CFO. Okay. What happened if we invest in developing our people and they and then they leave us? Oh yeah, this happens. But however, uh -huh, there is another target of the revenue, something. Okay, so they, if there is a high potential. And then that's around at the five five years, four or five years more, and then they are ready to jump up. Okay, and then there is another, there is another target, executive level. Okay, so in the tradition, 10 years, something. So that we have target of these, these, and this. So they, they are all related with the cost and the benefit, cost and benefit, cost and revenue, cost and benefit side. We have this. So that, that kinds of things happens. Okay. We invest our resources in developing people. Okay. We train them, we let them have a chance to work, and then they learn something and they are ready to perform. And then suddenly another company take them. Okay. So that happens. The CFO, Chief Financial Officer. Absolutely, he concerns about that. What if they leave? Even though we invest a lot of money, but how about the best talent to where the best people can leave? And then one of the disadvantage of the high potential program is that we invest a lot of money in high potential, okay? And they leave, okay? Oh, absolutely, we saw that a lot. For example, they were chosen as high potential and they trained for five years as a manager. And almost immediately, they moved to McKinsey Consulting. They did a lot of money. Okay. Personally, they good. However, yeah, what is happening from the company? We invest a lot of our resources. But however, they need. Okay. Yeah. So that is the reason why a lot of companies don't want to invest in developing people to save money and to avoid this kind of situation. And then, oh, absolutely, that makes sense in terms of the business. Okay, good. However, here is a reply. Here is an answer. Here is an answer from the CEO. 
What happens if we don't invest in people, if we don't train and develop in people, and they stay? What happens if we do not invest in our people and they stay? Huh? What Oh, no, 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 that's okay. And they already surpassed at the court and they stay here. They stay here. However, mm -hmm. we, if we don't invest, cost in terms of what? Mm -hmm. So then, oh, the, your, yeah, your company is supporting your MBA? No, okay, so they don't invest in you. How about you develop yourself? Okay, so because your company is not supporting you. <laughs> okay, so then, or how you don't invest in your development. So, however, if you are well trained, if you are well promoted, if you have a better chances of moving, you need to move because your organization do not commit in your development. So then, do you do you want to support your company? Your company do not support your development. Uh -huh. So the, no, I don't say that the business or economy some people. How about I am talking about it? Your feeling. What do you feel if your company do not invest in you? Do you want to work for the company? If they can give money, okay. So until they can, well, until I can make money, okay, I will stay. But however, I will always look for another chance. Nature. We are human beings. We have a right there. Okay? Sure. You are investing in your personal career development. You are investing in your personal development. Not in your company. Okay, absolutely. So then, yeah, this is happening a lot, and then we will see. Okay, see the case of that is it happens all around the world. It happens all everywhere in the business. For you today. Good morning, John. Good morning. I am fine, thank you. I reviewed your budget increase proposal for 2012 and would like to discuss the employee development program that you are suggesting. As you know, John, I am very concerned about our turned over rates. Since I started here as a human resources manager, our numbers increased. Yes, these numbers are really alarming. I know turnover and hospitality appears to be considerably higher than in other industries. Food service has been particularly affected. In 2009, the turnover rate for hospitality industry was 31%. These rates exceed the rates of the banking industry by 13%. How is your proposed employee development program going to help? Well, as you know, I have done some extensive research and here is why there is a need for such program. I am listening. As we know, employee development programs have the potential to enhance an employee's commitment to the organization, which consequently reduces turnover rates. Please tell me more. There is evidence to suggest that employees value the development opportunities provided by their employers. Just to give you an example, the results of a Hilton Hotel study indicate that employees strongly value career development opportunities and rated the organization's employee development efforts as the most important factor in continued employment. Who can enroll in this program? Everyone. Participation of the frontline employees who make the first connection with our customers should increase the morals, expand their knowledge and skill base, and prepare them for new responsibilities. What are the benefits for all other employees? Management development is also important for new managers because they need instruction how to perform new supervisory jobs. Without the instruction, they may feel frustration or inadequacy. What about our experienced managers? Lower and middle level managers also need to be provided with development programs to prepare them for executive positions. I see. 
How do we assure that this is effective? By developing succession planning program. Please clarify. It is a process of defining future management requirements and identifying candidates who fit the requirements. I understand. The next step of the process is specifying the timing and the content of development activities. What type of instructional methods are you recommending? I am not a big fan of classroom instruction. Neither am I. We can establish career resource center where instructional reading materials and workbooks will be available. In addition, we can use action learning method and develop special projects where trainees learn by doing. You mean a task force? Similar. While task force involves teams, special projects are designed for individuals where trainees are given assignments with specific objectives, target dates, and action plan. One of the individual projects could be studying and analyzing companies' finance sheets and developing improvement plan. I see. Developing and implementing highly effective employee development program will show company commitment and support of employees. I agree. Employees are one of the most critical assets of any hospitality operation. They determine the quality of customer service. Investing in our employees contributes to the I can see the importance of investing in our employees to assure organizational profitability. So can I move forward with developing the program? Yes. Let's meet next week to discuss details. Great. I am excited about the implementation of the program and I believe it will be well received by our employees. Okay, so this is the traditional discussions between the CEO and the HR manager or the HR CHRO. Okay, so talking about the training and development. Okay, so then here, maybe we can summarize like this. If we do not invest in our people, and that, that means we treat the people like force. You have a cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to minimize our costs. And we treat you like a force. Oh, yeah, that is true because we invest. We need to invest in this. Okay, good. However, if we do not invest in people and then if they stay, what will happen? Mm -hmm. No investment in people, no training, no development, no vision, no hope, commitment, motivation to work. Yeah. Okay, good. Then they start to leave. They leave. They do not stay in our for money. Okay, that's natural. That's natural, and then according to the statistics, and then yeah, the turnover rate is thirty one percent in the hospitality, like a restaurant, restaurant industry, something. And however, the thirteen percent of the bank and the one out of the bank is now leaving. But however, the with other according to the statistics of the high tech and the, from my experiences, and then the turnover rate of the first year employee, first year employee is around the thirty percent, and even worse, okay. Uh, not 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 thirty percent, sixty percent. The first year employee, for example, in the Google, no exception, Google, TikTok, Facebook, and many technology companies, their turnover rate of the first year engineer is around sixty percent. Six out of ten leave within one year. Uh, really, and that's a dark truth. <laughs> That's a dark truth, okay? And that is happening. But however, they never talk about it, okay? That's a dark truth, 50%. And yeah, that is the reason why the HP invite, the, invite us. The HP invite uh, the, my advisor and the me and as a business consultant to address that kind of problem. Why the best engineers are leaving their company within one year, even though they got the best job at the HP. Mm -hmm. So then we worked for that, we interviewed and we conducted a lot, we conducted a few number of surveys and then we wanted to identify the root cause of the 
uh, problem of that, and then we I will talk more about that. But however, the one thing is clear: within one year, more than sixty percent of the newly hired people leave their company. Okay. Anyway, so hmm, let's summarize. What happens if we invest in developing our people and then they leave us? Okay, so that means, okay, that is a cost. And the CFO mentioned about the cost of this side. Okay, and the CEO say, what happens if we don't? No commitment, they leave. Okay, that's natural. But however, if they do not leave, what happens? Don't be Wednesday. What happens? This will happen. This is, this is happens. This is happening. Real. I'm serious. So we call they are the zombie employees. Zombie employees. Zombie Changxi. And really, we call they are zombie employees. And then more, more sophisticated, you know, the terminology is highly disengaged employees, unhappy employees, highly disengaged employees. At the vandalizing or the very negative employees, we can identify that we can do something. But however, the zombie employees, uh, <laughs> it's getting more complex. It's getting more complex. And uh, what is the characteristics of the zombies? What Hmm. Zombie. Okay. So here, zombies and the highly disengaged employees. Zombies, no communication and growing a lot. No communication. Mm, so zombie employees, they do not communicate with the people. They do not talk with the manager. They do not talk with the peers. They do not talk with people. Uncommunicative, peer opinion don't matter, clog in, clog out. They just come in, they just go out. Mm? Mm. Oh, there are a lot. <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of those people. The people of Canadian, plug in, plug out, go out, do nothing. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> don't talk to me. Okay, good. And then hungry for brain and then hungry for feedback or following goal. But however, usually they don't get it from the manager. Manager is a zombie too. Okay. And in physical decay states, and then absolutely they are in the motivation decay states. They lost their motivation. They lost their motivation. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. And a risk to those around them, okay? And then a risk to your organization success. However, that means this kind of highly disengagement is highly contagious. What is the character? What is the most? What is the most fundamental characteristics of zombies? Zombies create unhealthy. Negativity. Zombies create another zombie, and quickly your organization is full of. Zombies. That is the reason why we do not have a highly engaged population, engaged workforce. According to the Gallup statistics, almost every year, okay, so Gallup published and Gallup announced that, okay, so what is the global employee engagement level? According to the statistics, okay, no more than 30%. In general, no more than 30%. Highly engaged employees, no more than 30%. That means only 30% of the employees are working human. And 70% of employees are 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is true. That is true. That is true. And it's okay. It's okay. That's our human society. That's okay. That's a human society. That's a human society. Okay? Only one problem is how we can deal with this situation. How we can deal, how we can manage this situation. No matter what, in Western world, no more than, yeah, they're around at the 60, 65% are zombies. And in Asian area, in China, in Korea, in Japan, in Malaysia, in, uh, in Singapore, 85%. Mm, <laughs> uh -huh. So Western and uh, West, Western Eastern, there is uh, some very, oh, but in general, 70% of people are not working. Zombies. They, they are very, oh. They, they are very good at pretending. Oh, I am totally busy. Oh, oh we, are, you know, we, are, we are very good at pretending. Oh, I am working. I'm busy. Oh, but do not. Yeah, fortunately or unfortunately, we are very good at in front of them, when manager comes, oh, when manager disappear, oh. <laughs> ah, you don't do that? Why well, I do that? <laughs> I do that. I'm a human being. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And uh, and now then, and that, that is one of the very interesting something, okay? So then for many years, for around the 10 years, and then open office, open, open office HR practice was getting popular. Open office means, okay, we, we destroy and the, we get rid of all the, uh, what is that? All the partitions, no partition, no hiding, okay? And in, in the office, no, no, no boundary and no shell and no partition, something. And then, so that's totally open. Huh? What does that mean? Manager. <laughs> manager, manager can send anybody and everybody can see each other, okay? Cool. And that, that was encouraged for more than 10 years, you know, to encourage the more communication, more collaboration, and more something, more, more better interaction. Huh? Okay. However, nowadays we restart building our silo <laughs> partition. Okay, same place. <laughs> the hard to close the old piece of something because we need the idling. Okay. When you are when you are totally exposed to, to the monitoring observation, you are okay. and on the other hand, when you are in the silo, you do not work. <laughs> okay, that's a problem of the balance. Okay, if you do not monitor, somebody will be idling, and if you monitor too much, people get stressed. So we don't know what is right, what is wrong, but however, the always manager must be talk, negotiate, and talk. However, in that situation, the, your manager try to talk, listen to you. Okay, so then maybe some of the solutions, whatever, if, okay, if there is any chance, maybe I can give you a partition, something hiding, someone. So, whatever, zombies. When we have zombies, quickly, organization is getting full of the zombies, and that kills organization. Why that happens? If the organization between you as forces and new investors. No investment, no commitment. Phone number, thank you. Or the leaving the company, okay. However, if you stay, 
you are becoming a zombie. Okay, so then zombies. Okay, and important. Okay, and then the scary thing is nearly one third of the employees think that they never fail to effectively communicate goals, and one third of the employees say they lack authority to carry out their job effectively. And the 40% of employees say they don't receive a regular clear feedback on their performance from their manager. Oh, TikTok case, no listening. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. And the stop the complete send the signatures, create the culture that foster the engagement, provided the managers with training in that help them be better coaches, diverse development need, and assess clear achievable goals with the organization purpose. purpose. Recognize the high performers and the high producers. Mm -hmm. Not easy. Not easy. Okay. That is the reason they need to make efforts. But they do. Okay. So that this is the fundamental question, and that, that is not easy to answer. Oh. So there are many. Many companies, many companies talk, and many CEOs, many executives may talk like this. Uh, our most important asset is you. You are the most valuable asset. Hey, work hard. So how about they treat you as an asset, or they treat you as a force? Force. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, many high guys and the executives in the world, the CEOs, they they love to talk about this. Oh, we want to treat you as asset. But Harvard, in order to be in order to transform a person as an asset, important asset, they need to invest. They need to invest in you. Okay. And then from the video you may have heard about. There are a few number of the stages, especially for especially that request that require the very intensive investment. This time, when somebody from just the subordinate to the middle level manager, we need to invest in this time. Okay, we need to support this time. So many times, many yeah, many organizations they support MBA program or the regular training program online something in this time. Around the four or five years, okay, we let we offer we offer. Ah, do you want to have a management position, management or something? And then we have a few number of this kind of the training program for you, including the MBA. Then we suggest, and then we let them have we let them have we support the MBA program. Go to the Harvard, go to MIT, go to somewhere, and then please get the MBA, and then we can let you have a chance to become the. Next level manager. This time, MBA. That is the reason why the MBA also requests for the four or five years of a job experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. We are, we are totally matured to get an MBA. Then becoming a middle level manager, perform. And then four or five years or the seven years after that, and they are ready to go to the next level, executive level. In this time, the Organization usually so usually uh, let you have a chance to year off sabbatical. We fully support your travel and one year off. We don't need to work. We support. We give you a salary, but we don't need to work and you'll go somewhere and then fully charge recharge yourself again and the company. We call that as a sabbatical. One year. Oh. One year, six months, but how about, yeah, one year, six months, whatever. Okay, it depends on the situation, but how about we usually generally propose that the one year off, sabbatical year. Why not? Why not? Because you need that. You need, you need time to recharge yourself to work better. Okay, that's a sabbatical practice. And on the other hand, you, we, we offer you an executive MBA program, executive training program, where the, we give you another chance of the training yourself and the, 
we usually support that the business networking, sorry, business networking chances, business networking. Okay. And then executive coaching for business time. Because if we invest in you, you are becoming a more better valuable asset in order to make, in order to transform you as an asset, we need to invest in you. Okay. And yeah, personally, I like this method for work. I like this method for work. Mm. Diamond or hole. Diamond or hole. Okay. So then, you know the diamond. Diamond is expensive. Why diamond is expensive? It's brightly diamond. Okay. And then, however, there is a coal. There is a coal. And that's burning out. And then once that we consume that, we just trash it out. But however, do you know that this is, this is composed with the same material? Oh, absolutely. Oh. And what is the difference of these two? Why a few number of the carbons is becoming a diamond? Why a few number of the carbons? Why majority of the carbons is consumed like this? Hmm? High temperature and high pressure. And high. investment, high investment. In order to give you a high pressure, in order to give you a high temperature, that can transform you as a diamond, okay? Mm. We need an investment. We need an investment. And you know that the majority of the diamond is fully manufactured. A natural diamond is wanted, but however, the in industry, okay, so we, make diamond by using a lot of investing in high temperature, high pressure. Uh-huh. So if an organization, if a society want to have more precious diamonds, if they want to have more assets, if an organization want to have more assets, not a coal, okay? Hmm. Investment, give them a temperature, give them a pressure, give them an investment, give them a chance to transform. Mm. So then we call this kind of transformation process as training development. But well, however, you know, many society, many organizations want to use people as consumable goods. They want to consume those people. We gather, you burn out, out. Burning out. Oh, it's just it's burning out. You work for 10 years and you totally burn out. Bye bye. Bye. So then, absolutely, this can be understood like this, so that this is the reason why training and development is important. If we do not invest in people, if we do not train and develop the people, they lose their motivation to stay or serve for organization, then they become zombies, Zombies, inactive zombies, not bad. But however, the active zombies create another zombie. Then, then the organization is becoming toxic.
Okay, good. Oh, zombie is here. Okay, so then let's go forward. The main purpose of the developing people is to create and keep the sustainable competitive advantage. Competitive advantage. Okay, and then the competitive advantage usually come from the human competency. Competency, okay. And the competency usually come from the resource and organ capability. And then we talk these kind of things from the, yeah, for the, by using the, the multiple capital theory. And let's see, and how to develop the people. And the, okay, so in the video, <clears throat> Uh, in the video, they develop a program, okay, so whatever, okay. So then in the video, maybe you hear, uh, the CEO don't like that the classroom learning something, classroom. He didn't like that the classroom something. Classroom, where is classroom performance? The result is customer to mobile, where is the requirement uh, requirements identity, development activity, kind of the instructional method. Okay, so the, what kinds of external, external method, what kinds of learning method they can use, and then neither. Okay. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the classroom. Hmm. Okay, so the in your organization, and then the classroom training is over. And classroom, and the, you are now you are now participating in the classroom. All right. So then, do you think that the, do you, are you learning something necessary for the walking knowledge? Are you learning for the walking knowledge for your company? Are you are you learning are you learning from me about it, the your walking knowledge? No, general general concept or understand, not the working knowledge. Okay, hmm. However, that's necessary. So then, like that, in order to perform the work. Okay, so we need the more working knowledge. Whatever. So the, in order to create a more working knowledge, that means that the, you are in, you need to increase your competency. Okay, so then there must be. Mm, so we have a 10, 20, 70 rule in training. Okay, and this is not written rule, but however, the we the HLD guys. Okay, so we HLD guys, we are talking a lot about this kind of thing. Ah, oh, learning from classroom. How many percent of the learning can occur from the classroom learning? 10%. So that is the reason why the CEO and the, the HR lady, they didn't like that the classroom learning something. Okay? So only 10%. Good. And they talk a lot about it, the coaching or the another instruct another interactive coach, interactive mentoring, mentoring program. Okay? So here they talk, not a big fan of the classroom, and neither am I. And then resource center, okay, resource center is one thing, a book and the learning method development and the human effect task force like this, okay, training, learning by doing, okay, and then they are doing mentoring, individual project, companies, fine, okay, so then, and she suggests a few number of the different methods in developing people, including, Mentoring, coaching is this, learning from others. Learning from others. 20% of the important learning come from the learning from others. Your manager, your mentee, mentor, and the external coaches, okay? So the end of your colleagues, your, your peers. So that usually come from the feedback, coaching, mentoring, and performance appraisal, okay? Good. However, as the HR manager said, Okay, you mean the task force something? Okay, you know, model the team, courses. Okay, so there is a project based learning, project or training, learning by doing. Mm -hmm. Learning by doing this. More than 70% of the working knowledge come from learning by doing. Job, job experiences, project based learning, problem solving, and daily work. But however, your daily work can your daily work is well organized to learn something new. Not much. And the, you uh you have a chance to do try the something new in your organization. You have a chance to do that. And then do you have any uh product based or something? Well, do you have a more chance to engage in the problem solving, more important the problem solving? Hopefully not much. And that kills the majority of the learning chance. 
And the managers who are the CEOs and the many decision makers, they misunderstand about it, the learning. Learning is not just a classroom or an entry, and that's a visible something. And then if you if you request for the, hey, manager, I need a training and development. I want to develop myself. I want to do something. I want to, I want to, I, yeah, I want to improve my competency. I want to improve my skills. Then the manager will usually commonly mechanically. So they say, huh, do you want to go to classroom? Do you want to go to MBA program? Do you want to go to the training program? What kind of training program do you want to participate in? Bullshit. No, that's only 10%. I say that is important, okay? I do not say that it's not important. But more important thing is the manager must design and let them have a chance to work. Work, job. From the daily work, they can learn something new. They need a chance, autonomy to explore something better. Let them have a chance to do something new, but they don't because that's risky. But Netflix do, Apple do, Google do. That's how they continually create innovation. For example, do you know the Android, Android phone, Android? Is there anybody who used the non-Apple phone? I am using Apple. Everybody uses Apple. Everybody uses Apple iPhone. And if we are using the uh, Oppo, Vivo, or Huawei phone, okay, you must non non Apple phones are using the Android OS. Android, okay, Android. So then, do you know the, the who who is yeah who developed the Android Android OS? Uh, oh. Google. Google. Yeah, Google. Yeah, Google. Why? Why they developed the Google Android OS? Why? First, why? Why the why a few number of the engineers developed the Android OS first? Huh? To for the mobile phone? No, absolutely no. Around the 20 to 2000, around the 2005, 6, 7, Google, a few number of the Google engineers, okay? And then, do you know that the Google has a 20% of Google? 20% of Google, and, yeah, I go back. Google has a 20% of Google. And then you know that, the, okay, so we, they work for five days a week. Okay, so how many, how many days do you work? Five days a week. Huh? How many days do you work in a day, in a week? Well, yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> Thursday, Friday, okay? Five days of work, okay? Out of five days, Google engineers and the Google people has 20% off. So one day, okay? They work four days a week for Google, okay? One day, they can work by themselves for their personal work. Personal project. That's fine. So then Google have a Google provided the autonomy, job autonomy. Okay. So one day out of the five days, working days, okay, four days they work for Google. So however, the one day they work for their personal project. Personal project, okay? And then a few number of the stupid Google engineers, huh? They use this one day off. 20% of those personal projects and they, pers they personally engaged in developing the Android OS for operating home appliances device. They thought, why we developed that the operating system for refrigerator? Laundry machine, okay, and that is we call that is a home automation. Home automation. They want you to make a home automation operating system for refrigerator and uh, you know, what is that? Cookers and uh, laundry machines, all the home appliances. 
they want to integrate those kind of IOP. Okay. So the, a few number of the Google engineers, they developed this Android OS. And unfortunately, Google do not have a laundry machines. Google do not have a man, do not manufacture these. And uh, they contacted a few number of the large home appliances company. Okay. And then they almost immediately come to Samsung. Samsung was the large, Samsung was the largest laundry, laundry manufacturer in the world. So then they came to the Samsung and then they offered to Android OS to the, their applying to the apply to the, the refrigerator and the home appliances something. And the Samsung said, shut up, get out, you stupid. We are now developing a new OS. And then, yeah, all they, all their, their suggestions to the Android OS for the home appliances were totally rejected from all home appliances companies, all around them. Samsung, Bosch, General Electric, and Gree, and then at the time the higher many companies, we didn't know what, what, what the hell is that? But well, however, that a few number of the Google engineers developed that, and then suddenly, two thousand seven, iPhone comes, iPhone OS, iPhone comes. Huh? What? So then, quickly, a few number of the mobile, the mobile company, okay, Samsung, Nokia, and the Sony, Ericsson, and the, and a few number of the companies, a few number of the mobile companies, they wanted to develop that the new operating system. But however, that was not easy. That was not easy. So at that time, Google suggests, hey, we have this. We have this, and then why not? We can develop them more. Android for non iPhone. With free. Ah, that's a start of the dominating Google's operating system in mobile. And that's the turning point of the Google's becoming the world largest and the world profitable as a profitable mobile company. They become the diamond. So Android OS is one of the diamond and the cash cow and the most of the value. Absolutely, that is one of the most profitable products for Google. How they were, how that kind of product come from, and they were the totally lovely baby, you know, at the time that not London. But however, throughout the continual investment in Google, they become diamond. Become a diamond throughout the continual investment in people, continual support for those kind of the stupid ideas. And then the Google just, ah, oh, that's fine. You can do it later. And you can make it another chance. You can try this again. And you will definitely continue your personal project, even though that is totally looks as totally stupid. But go ahead. If you have a pattern, if you have a chance, if you have a, if you want to do, why not? Diamond is not made of people. It takes a lot of time. High temperature, high pressure, just one second. No, high temperature, high pressure for many days, many years. Then we have a chance to get diamond. But however, your organization do that. Many organizations can do that. So that is the problem of the developing people. Okay, that is the problem of the developing people. So how to develop people? 10, 27 year old learning from third class. Okay, that's necessary to learn about the conceptual skill. Okay, conceptual skill. Okay, good. The fundamental skills, more meta skills. You can learn that kind of. And you can learn the more the working knowledge. Okay, from others, learning from others. Okay. Good. However, most of your direct learning knowledge come from 
your experience, learning by doing. So then with the better tool, let people have a chance to do something by themselves, like Google. Let them have a chance to do design and explore something totally new way of business. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes money. We need to invest. If we invest, we have a very little chance to transform a few number of the, a few number of something into the diamond. But however, if we do not, if we do not invest in people, if we do not invest in this situation, okay, nothing happens. Everybody will burn out. Everybody will leave. And if they leave, we appreciate. And they stay. They stay in organization as zombies. Zombies create a zombie. That is the problem of the training and development. What if we do not invest in people and they stay zombies? Clear. That's our understanding in HR. Okay, good. Then we will go forward. So that how we can understand the, the human behavior. So zombie, okay. So I don't care about your brain. I don't care about your emotion much, okay. So how we can know that though? our thinking is changing every moment. Your emotion change every moment. And then the, the, can we know that the human brain, can we know that the, what the others are thinking? Well, the, can we know that the, they, they, they have that kind of emotion? Uh, not easy. And that, that does not matter. That does not matter. Okay? We cannot control over the thought. We cannot control over the emotion. Okay? Good. However, behavior is a different story. Because your talking, your behaviors, it totally make an impact on the other's behavior, other's interaction. Other so reaction. Okay. So in company, in within organization, we manage human behavior. We cannot control over your soul. We cannot control over your emotion. What can we do? No. And that that's unnecessary. Okay. Do I need to control over your brain? Not possible and not necessary. Do I need to brainwash? <laughs> no, I can't. That's not right. And uh, oh, in, in Germany, we have we have this word. Yeah, so this is a fundamental idea. Okay, our yeah, our idea must be free. <laughs> our thinking is free, and that that is the get down can jin to fry. That that is okay. Uh, give me a second. So maybe yeah, because I I come from Germany. Okay, that the okay. don't jin to fry. Life G. Yeah, I come from the light Z. Okay. 
Yeah, so that is one of the examples of the, okay, so that is the reason why we cannot control over the human thinking. Human thinking, okay. So that can I, can I control, can I, your brain, can I, both, can I do, no, it's not possible. It's okay, it's okay, okay? Thinking is, thinking must be free, thinking is okay, good? And the, your emotion, okay, so can I control over your emotion? Ah, yeah, even though I want to do it, but however, that is not Every day, every moment, the human emotions change. Mm. However, the behavior is a different story. Action is different story. Okay, action, talking and the action is different story. So then, uh, mainly, okay, mainly, we want to manage the human behavior. Okay, human resource management, human resource management, organizational behavior, or the leadership development, whatever, we do not manage, we do not control over the human thought, human emotions, affection. Okay, but however, we mainly focusing on managing human behavior. Okay, and according to the Kirkpatrick's, Kirkpatrick's, and then Kirkpatrick's, human. Should be understood like this. because we are talking about at the training and development. Okay, so we 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 have a, we have a fundamental understanding of this. Okay, the thinking we call this is cognition, cognitive domain. Okay, and then there is the, the heart. And then feeling. And we call this is objective domain. Okay, and then action, behavior. Okay, we call that as a psychomotor domain. Behavior. So we can understand the human like this, and then we mainly want to manage this. And how to manage this? Uh, through this, through this. Okay, we will talk about it. We will talk about this. Okay, in order to you know to manage the human behavior. Okay. We do better to let people have a certain way of thinking, and we do better to let them have a certain way of the feeling. Okay, we want to do that's an education, that's a training, main something. However, more directly in management, okay, uh, we are not a professional educator. Business is not education, you know, okay. Why we do not say about it, the education in business? Why we say that is training and development, not education. Education is maybe this education, okay? However, training, no. <laughs> no, you are not kids. You can. Cognitive development or the train uh, education is touching up this, but however, training, we can't because we are all adult, okay? Pedagogy is one thing. Pedagogy is of this. Pedagogy, pedagogy or something. And however, if you are all adult, pedagogy principle cannot apply. That's a violation of fundamental belief because we must treat the adult as adult. And then we have a andragogy. 
Katago is one thing. Okay, and then there's that another area. Andragogy, pedagogy for the children or adults. So then we'd better to think of this. A long story short, andragogy for adult education, for adults, for workers, for business guys, we do not have. We respect. We respect. We respect your free thinking. We respect your free emotion. We respect your differentiation. You respect your diversity. We respect that. Okay? But we guide, we suggest. We do that. But however, we want to manage this. This is a fundamental difference from the education. Okay? This is a fundamental difference of the employee development, employee training and development from the child education, pedagogy. Pedagogy and andragogy. So then you do better to understand there is a big difference in developing the, in developing the employees or the adult from the child education. You are not a child, okay? So then, okay, so we will keep talking about this kind of things, developing the adult, <laughs> yeah. developing the adult, okay, so we will keep talking about that. Okay, so let's say I have a short break and then we will continue. Any questions so far? So far, okay. okay. Am I making positive or negative? Well, thank you. Anyway, so if, if I make you negative, please Portray me. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, because one of the biggest characteristics of the zombie, zombie is that the negative. Okay, yeah, good. So then let's. Okay, so we start again. So, yeah, we discussed about it. Okay, so we are. Talking about it, the adult learning, adult education, especially for the employee training and development. Okay. So we unfortunately the training and development for the adults, especially for the employees, okay, who are working at the company, uh -huh, business, okay, they are not kids anymore. They are not a child anymore. They are not children, okay? And uh, we do not apply that the basic concept of the pedagogy. Pedagogy is, okay, pedagogy is, okay, so we direct. We direct that the, their thinking, their mind. We direct. We control. We try to control. So, hey, kid, you don't do that because you are totally stupid. You must work hard. You must do that. Okay, that's a pedagogy. And then, unfortunately, that's necessary because they are not matured, okay? So then, oh yeah, it's necessary. We, we should make a discipline. We should make, we should let them have a principle something, okay? So for kid, we need to do that. So a long story short, command and control, <laughs> okay? So we need to command and control the children's thinking and the feeling and behavior, okay? However, for fully grown up adult, can we command and control your thinking? Can we command and control your feeling? Unfortunately, don't do that. Huh? It don't you to fraud. <laughs> it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. And then, yeah, please don't do that. That's provoking. That's provoking. And then that, that trial of the thinking, of managing or commanding the control or the controlling the uh, commanding the thinking or feeling is. Uh, that's a manipulation and uh, yeah, okay. So maybe you love, you listen about it, the PUA, pig of artist. And actually the meaning of that is not exactly the same as the other word. But the, in China, okay, so PUA, the pig of artist. Hmm. Uh, not a brain, uh, that's more brainwash. That's a, that's a brainwash. Yes, like, yeah, I think that that's more like a guess, like, 
And even though that the U didn't do anything and the U didn't make any fault, and the, somebody yeah, manipulate the manipulate, not brainwashing, manipulate the thing throughout some action, something. Okay, so they change their thinking, they change their mind. So that we call that is a, in a bad way, that's a gaslight, psychological manipulation. Okay. So then, oh, please don't try that. <laughs> uh, please don't try that. Uh -huh. So then, mm, don't do that. Uh, anyway, so the, however, in the workplace, okay, in the business, in organization, we are dealing with a fully grown up adult. Okay. And is there anybody is, is, is within your organization, within your business, and is there anybody who is under 18 years old? That's a violation of the rule. No. Okay. So we must work with only fully grown up adults. <laughs> okay. Please. So then we must respect fully grown up adult as adult. Yeah. Adult is adult. Okay. Good. We respect that as an adult. Okay. Don't try to manipulate this. <laughs> Okay, pedagogy, no, the, the business or the organization is not a school, it's not an elementary school or kindergarten, no, don't do that. Okay, anyway, so however, in business world, we are interested in behavior, your behavior, employee behavior, okay, employee behavior, including the talking, okay, and uh, how we can understand that the behavior, employee behavior, okay. So maybe we do better to start with a fundamental understanding about it, that what makes the human behave? Why people behave like that? And then that is the fundamental question, why I changed my professional career from the engineering technology to management, okay? Why people work like that? So I have many workers. <laughs> I could observe my manager's behavior. I could observe the, my colleague's behavior. I could observe my subordinate behavior. I could observe many guys and many workers' behavior. And the, their behavior is totally strange. Why people work like that? And the, absolutely, that is a positive something. It's positively and the positively surprising and the negatively surprising. And the, a few number of the good guys, they work like crazy, even though nobody told them. They are working hard, they self-directed, and they bring, they bring the ideas, and then they make a fundamental innovation. They want to make a change of something. Okay? They work, they engage, they do something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a possible behavior. Okay. On the other hand, I could observe very strange and strange negative behavior, gaslighting of artists. And the zombies, and then vandalizing, or the do not work, ignorance. Okay, so there are a lot of the very strange behaviors, and so I was curious why people work like that. <laughs> huh? If we can understand the fundamental reasons why people behave or so work like that, maybe we can make it better. That was my original idea. That was my per fundamental inquiry, inquiry of the question, okay? Good, then oh, I try to understand that. Anyway, so I explored many, many, many things, blah, 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 blah. However, I, I want to start with the fundamental idea, the original idea of the, this human behavior understanding. A long story short, okay? Human behavior could be understood Two basic things. Human behavior can be described like this. Human behavior is a function of environment and person. And this came from the, not a bandura, this came from the Kargoli. The father of the organization psychology. And somebody say that's a social psychology. And somebody say that's a modern psychology. 
uh, your cycle. Anyway, he's a father of the, yeah, this kind of the organizational psychology, social psychology. Okay, and then Perdwin proposed this environment and person. He proposed that the human behavior is the function of two things. No more. Make it simple. Human is human behavior is subject to two environment situation. Okay, good, right? In a certain situation, everybody everybody has a certain reaction. Something, for example, in a crisis, everybody run. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's necessary. And then in a in a in a crisis, everybody run, and in a very positive something, maybe they work better. They enjoy some something. Okay. That's natural. Environment. Good. However, in the same environment, everybody may have a different reaction. Okay? In the same environment. For example, even though you have the same manager, somebody will work better. Somebody will not work well. Work and somebody will not, will not be corporate. In the same manager, under the same management. It depends on the person choice. So then, Person win propose that the okay human behavior is a function of the environment as well as person. And this fundamental idea came from Kurt Lewin's personal experiences. Kurt Lewin proposed that, and then that was developed more by the Another guy named Bandura, somebody. And Kurt Lewin, why he proposed that kind of the human behavior? Because Kurt Lewin, and we will talk about the Maslow, Abraham Maslow, and those two guys, and they could participate in the first World War I and first World War II, and the second World War. They, they were the veterans that the first World War and second World War, and especially the first World War. And what happened at the First World War? We killed each other. We did the way. We killed tons of thousands of people with no reason. In a brutal way. Chemical weapons, a lot of weapons, and machine guns. We killed tons of thousands of people with no reason. And then they participated. And actually, they are Americans, and the Americans don't need to participated in the First World War because that was occurred in Europe. And then, however, they volunteered. They volunteered as a citizen something. Anyway, so Kurt Lewin and uh, Abraham Maslow and a few guys, and they wanted to know and what is happening at the First World War, and then they observed what happened at the battlefield. And then they observed very strange human behaviors in the drama, in the, in the critical situation, how the In the crisis of the death or the life, okay? And people have a very strange reaction. And they could observe what happened in the in the battle. Somebody, somebody sacrificed their life to save one or that another. And somebody just hide. And a few number of the generals, they are just covert. And majority they ignore. They indifferent. So, Kurt Lewin and Abraham the Maslow and a few number of those guys could observe the bad or dark behaviors of the human beings and the positive behaviors of the human beings, and that they could observe what is happening on the human behavior in that critical situation. And they, they couldn't understand why that kind of thing is happening, why people behave like that. And then they study. They started to study. They fundamentally question. And then we had understanding, basic understanding that was developed by that, the, uh, what is that, who is that? Uh, the psychology, the, the Jung and the, huh? Siegfried, Freud, Freud and the Jung, Freud, Jung's the psychology, that's a traditional psychology something. But however, that does not that does not apply to, to that situation. So then Kurt Lewin and a few number of the bad guys, they came back to the US and they started to 
question that kinds of that uh, question to the fundamental human behaviors and then they they elaborate their understanding in their way okay in an academic way so then they develop that a new way new way new paradigm of the psychology organization psychology social psychology something and then based on that human behavior is not just a complex or a self-conscious something no 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 more directly, human behavior comes from the situation, environment, and the personal difference. Make it simple. A beautiful equation. And that idea drove a lot of the different thinkings about the human behavior. And that was developed as a new corporate practice, a pedagogical approach, and the andragogy, and the modern education that is backed by that a lot of the new educational what the pedagogical theory says something, okay? That is, a, that is a paradigm, that is a new paradigm that was developed in the US, whatever. And that was developed, that, 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 that was this, that, that, that was evolved into the Bandura, so social learning theory. And say, human behavior is the, uh, is the function of the, the environmental factor and the person factor, good. And however, that is more interactive with each other. Okay, that was interactive for each other. And then actually that is not that. Human behavior, person, and the environment. Traditionally, we believe that the environment makes the influence on the behavior and the person is making the influence on this. Traditionally, we understand that. But how the Bandura and then another colleague and the University of Iowa, and they propose that, the, no, no, no. This is much more reciprocal and the dynamic. They are all interactive. Human behavior, okay, not only this way, human behavior also make an impact on the human person, personal perceptions, personal understandings, personal difference. And the human behavior also make an impact on the environment. And the environment and the person is interactive. So that now we have a better understanding about the human behavior is not very simple. And the human behavior is reciprocal and interactive and more dynamic among these three factors. Okay, so that is our understanding. That is now understanding. Human behavior is not that simple. Okay, and moreover, human behavior is not subjective and it is not a dependent variable from the environment and the person itself, but also human behavior make an influence on the person and environment. Active, more active. Okay. Uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> I, uh, that's the education of theory. Something. <laughs> okay. No, no, don't worry. Okay. So we will go in practical. Practical. The theory, theory. Okay. Practical. We go to the practical. Okay. As a workplace. Okay. So in the workplace, this was proposed by the hmm, Bernan and the Seaman. 2006, 2006, and Verena and Simon make him more practical in terms of the human resource development at the workplace in business. At the workplace, we can manage the human behavior, especially for the employee behavior, employee behavior with this framework. Okay, so employee behavior, employee behavior is task performance, task action, organization behavior, and the self-directed behavior, participation, or the, the innovation behavior, innovative behavior, and the, the, what is that? And the many, the employee behaviors. Why this kind of employee behaviors is come from? Okay, that is, that, is, that could be understood in this way. We want to manage this. We want to make this kind of a possible employee behavior in order to make an outcome. Okay, in order to make an outcome performance, okay, because we want to make money. Okay, outcome, personal outcome, organization outcome, that means we want to make money. Okay, behavior is direct, behavior has a direct relation with this. Okay, the human the behavior is influenced by personal difference, personal difference. And what kinds of the employees' personal difference they have? 
they have a different level of the motivation. Huh? Absolutely, everybody has a different levels of the motivation. I want to work, I don't want to work. Motivation. And then they have a different attitude. And they have a different knowledge, skills, and ability. KSAO, and usually we summarize that as competency. So everybody has a different personal differences. Okay, that come from that. And this personal difference is interactive with environment, surroundings, surroundings. And there are two different ways, two, two different surroundings, direct surrounding, direct environment from within the organization, there is an interaction with the supervisor, supervisor, manager, okay? And there is a, there is a direct relationship with the organization, the CEO, uh -huh. and there is, a, or, there is an interaction with the core person. So these three level, level, different level, these three different levels of the environment, the interact, interactions make an influence on your personal perception, personal understanding, personal, personal differences, okay? Then they make a behavior. However, these kind of things, the interaction, direct interactions of the person and the, the within the organization interaction, that is subject to the larger environment larger environment okay social environment like economic condition okay for example uh until the last year what happened in china in business in terms of the business could we make a business travel no so we are totally subjected to the very strict covid 19 control okay so that was that was my choice that was the business choice no that was given that was an environment Okay, so the absolutely we are subjected to that kinds of the environment. Okay, social environment is okay. That's the situation. Okay, and the economic condition, technology changes, and the, did you develop the, the artificial intelligence by yourself? No, that's given. Okay, can you control over that? No. And the labor market condition and the law and the regulation, labor union, these kind of things are the factors in the external environment. And many times, this source, big surroundings, big environment, big social environment is given. We cannot control over that. We are totally subjected to that. It's okay. It's okay. However, in this met, in this in this environment, we should make a choice of this. We should make a we should make a better choice of the behavior. And that we want to manage this, not control. We cannot control the human behavior. We want to manage this human behavior. Okay. In this situation, throughout the managing the relations of this, we want to make a possible relation, positive behaviors that draw, that draw, that can drive the positive outcomes. That's what we are doing. But in order to do that, we must have a good understanding about these contemporary issues of the business environment and that we do better to manage things. However, that is fundamentally based on our basic understanding in terms of the human behavior. Human behavior, again, is the function of environment and person. Environment and person. Okay, so then in order to manage human behaviors in the workplace, we must be able to manage interactions and personal difference. Okay, good, we'll see. Okay, and then possibly, yeah, maybe you can remember my suggestion, okay, my research. So that my research of the why people work by themselves, this is a self-directed employee behavior, self-directed behavior, okay? Why subordinate work by themselves, okay? So I use that the personal difference as a psychological capital, and I use the autonomous work environment as the variable of the environment, okay? That's exactly the same, good. However, my finding is like this. 
Work environment. Work environment and the self-directed employee behavior. Unfortunately, there is no statistically significant relation. And if there is any negative, if we give a more positive, positive work environment, autonomous work environment, people don't want to work. Mm -hmm. However, that's statistically uh, not much. Uh, there is, okay? So then maybe we can, we just ignore that. Okay, anyway. And the person has a more direct relationship with that behavior. Person, person difference, okay? More positive people work by themselves more. Clear, clear, okay? However, there is a relationship between these two. Autonomous working environment, autonomous working environment, more positive working environment can create the positivity. And then the more positive people work better. Even though there is no direct relations, we can understand in this way. Okay, so then why this is why this is have why this is important for managing people and the, to encourage the people to work by themselves because many times they want to replicate it to Google and Google Google's twenty percent rules and that is a, that is a changing the environment. Okay, so there are many companies want to replicate the other companies HR practice in order to change their environment work environment. Yeah, what if we can replicate it to Google's 20% of rules for Yahoo? And what if we can apply that to flexible work time like the other companies? What if we can just apply that to, we can pretend we are serving for our companies, we are serving for our employees, let to let them have the Netflix HR policy and the no, no vacation, no travel, comfort, something, okay? And no HR. Mm -hmm. And that is visible. And that is a that is an effort to change the environment. Okay, environment. But unfortunately, that does not work. <laughs> there is no relations. There is no significant relations. And if there is any, it's is somewhat negative. Oh, it's totally strange. It's totally strange. But however, maybe if we can think a little bit different way, maybe that makes sense. Okay, for subordinate, for subordinate, okay? For subordinate, what do you mean? For subordinate, not manager. Subordinate need what they need to do. Subordinate need to understand what, what, what task, what project, and what missions must be done. They, they, they know that what they need to do what they want, what they want from the organizer, what they want to get from the manager. They need a very clear direction. They need a direction. They need a clear standard. They need a clear task. They need a clear job to get things done. If they do not have a very clear directions, standard, values, missions, goals, they are in panic. They don't know what to do. Okay, they don't know, simply. So then they are reluctant to, to do something else. They are reluctant. Oh, because I don't know, and that's risky. And they're, mm -hmm. what, why, why you give me a problem? Okay, so I have no idea what to do. They, and they, they are scared and they don't want to do something else. Okay. However, yeah, this is for the this is for the self-directed employee employee behavior for of the subordinate. But however, the, when I conducted the same analysis for the manager, manager, okay, it's a significant, it's totally significantly positive. So then managers know what they need to do, managers know what task must be done. A manager knows something, what kinds of things, what, what kinds of the things must be done. So they know, and they want to have more autonomy. They want to have a delegation. They want to have more empowerment. They want to have more flexibility. They want to have more power. Then if the managers got the more power, they work better. 
they work by themselves better. So then there is a differences of the different level. Subordinate, they don't need the autonomy. They need a clear leadership. While the middle level managers who are the high level managers, they need more flexibility and authority. Okay. On the other hand, regardless of the rank, regardless of the, yeah, the, your rank or subordinate or the manager, positive people work better and they want to participate. They work better in self-directed behavior. They work by themselves in any situation, no matter what. And interesting thing is, even though we don't do anything, generally, Managers usually have high positivity. <laughs> Significantly high positivity. They are quite positive in terms of the work. And the managers, they usually have around the 4.6 and the subordinate has as 3.8 or something out of the five. Okay. And moreover, the problem is. It's, the variation is uh, very not, not very high, and the, the, the variation is very high. So then, this is the okay, the positivity. Okay, and this is manager. And managers, managers positivity is like this. Stable, stably high. Okay, that is okay, 3.2. And however, subordinate, subordinate positivity is totally uh, random. And then there is A, and then there is A. Okay. So I don't know. The positivity make the people get promoted or promotion make people positive. Huh? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, I have, I, I don't know. I, uh, what is the cause and effect? What is the cause and effect? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. It needs more study. But however, the, I don't know. But however, the, in general, regardless of the business sectors, so regardless of the different to business something and regardless of the, the, the organization something, okay? I found this. high length guys, they usually are positive, much more positive, stable, very positive, okay? In terms of the positive cycle of the okay? However, subordinate is very, it's a lot of the difference, okay? And I don't know, does that kind of the positivity make the people get promoted? get the four higher position or that promotion make them positive. I don't know. But however, there is a difference. One thing is clear, more positive people has a higher position. I, I, that, interesting. <laughs> well, that's true. That's my finding. Oh, that, that's, my, that's my research finding. I don't know. What were the, yeah, that's my finding. Okay, so that is the reason why I want, my mission is to, I want to make the people more positive, you know, regardless, okay? If we, if we can make the people more positive in terms of the self-efficacy, hope, optimism, and the resiliency, okay? And then they work by themselves in any situation. And then if they get positive, possibly they can get better. So that's my finding. That's my finding. That's my suggestion. And yeah, how to develop the people. Okay. So the 10, 20, 70 rule. Okay. 10% mm, strategy, strategically aligned training and development program structure. Okay. Executives and HR professionals. Okay. For these. And the 20% of the learning from the others, Honduras of social learning. Possible in the development of feedback, please, manager and the supervisor. And then absolutely the most important 
learning or person from learning by doing. In order to do that, in order to make that the learning happens in from the work, we should let people have a meaningful job. Why they need to do that? Purpose of the work. And the, what we are expecting from them. Okay? Meaning of work, meaning of job. Persuade. Let them have a motivation. Why? Purpose. Goals. Meaningful job design and assignment. Okay? And absolutely, this is not enough. I suggest employees, people need to take a responsibility of the learning by themselves. Organization can give you a chance. For Harvard, they must work. They must learn by themselves. Self-directed learning and the self-determination, willpower, positive attitude, behavioral intention, discipline, work ethics, morals. We organizations can give you a chance to think and learn. But please learn by yourself. Everybody has a responsibility in the of oneself. Responsibility in life. Responsibility in profession, responsibility of your duty, responsibility of yourself. We want to work with a fully formed adult. Adult take the full responsibility of their life and love. And that's on Netflix. So we want to do that. And this is important, but however, though, this must be founded. This must have a foundation of this. Do it by yourself. Take your charge. Take a responsibility of your charge. If you don't, you're not a child anymore. Pedagogy, and this is this training and development is a part of something, but however, andragogy has a fundamental assumption. You are taking up that possibility. We are working with our dog, not child. Child needs to go to school, needs to go to home, not work. Okay, okay. that's it. Yeah. Then, okay, so then this is more practical, practical guide of the how to design the training and development program, okay? And the any process of the people development, any program, and we have this, okay? And the ADI model, ADI model is the most systematic instructional system design method. Because there is IEC, instruction, IEC, instructional system design. ADI model. And the, you know, do you remember the HL diet father is a war? Uh, so HL come from war. War. HL management, human resources, modern human resource management come from war. Why I told them, why I told this? Came from, anyway, HRM, human resource management, and then included the HRB, human resource development, people development, and the mass training and development. Uh, Directly come from war, and especially World War II. And more fundamentally, they come from the World War I. Why that happened? What happened? Mm. During the World War I, and especially World War II, what happened? Almost all the young guys from 20 to 50 years old, okay, 20 to 40 years old, they went to battlefield. Huh? They went to battlefield to fight. Okay? 
oh, 20 to 40 years old, okay? And they went to the battlefield. And then, however, they need a weapon. They need a weapon. And somebody need to produce that uh, bullet. Somebody need to produce that uh, gun. Somebody need to produce that uh, airplane. Somebody need to produce that uh, battle, battleship. Somebody need to, somebody must develop and uh, produce that a lot of weapons for those 20 to 40 years of the young soldiers. Young man, man, okay? When they, all the men, Soldier. Okay, so they need a gun. <laughs> they need a gun. Oh. And they need a bullet. And who produces if there is no young man? They need to they need to produce work from gold. Uh, so who produced that kind of weapon? Mm. Exactly. We have only option of okay, women. However, unfortunately, around the 70 or the 80 years ago, or well, around 100 years ago, and the woman was expected to produce, could produce that kind of the complicated machines, weapons. They could do that. No. <laughs> okay. So then, what happened? We should. And Woman as a worker, skilled worker. Produce weapons to let them have weapons. There is a question how we can transform that unskilled, totally not ready, and then never worked before in the workplace. And how we can transform those ladies into the workers, skilled workers who can produce the airplane, gun, weapon, and how we can do that? Okay. Oh, we can. Yeah. No, we can't. We can't do that. Okay. So then. How, how, that, that was a question. That was a question. How we can transform the totally unskilled labor, the unskilled labor into the highly skilled labor? That was a question. And actually, that is not an education. That is not an education. Okay. And that must be short, that must be intensive, that must be happening within the organization, within the workplace, okay? Good, how we can do that? That was the question. Then we collect ideas. Hey, we have this situation. How we can transform the all unskilled, unskilled women into the skilled labor worker to produce that the very complicated and sophisticated weapon to fight against with our enemy, Nazis, Japanese imperialists. And the Italian passes. Oh, that was critical. That was totally critical. That's a death and life. And then a few number of the guys, and then they develop a system, training system. Workplace training system. Workplace training system. And actually, this workplace training system comes from the military weapons, military army, military boot camp. Military boot camp. Uh, do you know the boot camp? 
when you go to the army and what happened? Oh, anybody went to the army? Uh, no, 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 ladies, no. No army? Uh, give me a second. Yeah, I was a soldier two years. Yeah, all that. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> hey. Uh, is it possible to do that? Okay, give me a second. Uh, just the example. Yeah, okay, so okay. I'd better to show that boot camp. Yes, Marine. Mm. Ah, okay. These Marine recruits are being exposed to CS gas, more commonly known. As tear gas. <laughs> to experience its effects and to know how to properly use a gas mask. Gas yeah, chamber is important because it builds confidence. Confidence in the gear, confidence in the drone shoulders, and then confidence. Maybe it's better. Boot camp. This is Marine Corps Boot Camp in Harris Island, South Carolina. Before they become United States Marines, all recruits have to graduate from the Marine Corps' 13 week basic training program which tests them physically and psychologically. It's a pressure for the football leagues. You know, the pressure of uh, intimidating the drone instructor, someone is putting you under the scrutiny of attention to detail every single day, and to a certain degree, everything you do is never going to be good enough. Everything at boot camp sucks. It's going to hurt, it's going to be painful, but it's only going to hurt more if you look at it that way. Around, around, around. It's boot camp, and it's supposed to prepare you for the challenges that fly you. It's arrived in better shape than others. Paris Island is what's known as getting slain. It's okay. You realize the thing you've done to get in a fan bed? And then you realize, okay, that hurt, so let's not do that anymore. Essentially, it hurts, but me personally, I never worried about the pain I was doing in my body. It was more thinking about the mistake I made and how I need to correct it the next time. So it's going to be some chaos because when they come here, we want to tear them down a little bit and we want to bring them back up in, in the mold of what it is to be a United States Marine. Wait. These recruits officially become Marines. Okay, so then from, yeah, within 13 weeks, we transform a person, yeah, individual into Marine. Good game. Military boot camp. Actually, this is well designed training program. This is well structured, well designed, very intensive, transformational education training program that transformed the person into the soldier. Boot camp, okay? And that kind of principles is applied to workplace training, okay? But unfortunately, you see that, okay, so we cannot, we cannot apply that to God No, we are not dealing with the sword. We are dealing with unskilled women. We cannot do that, okay? Good, good, good. 
we got those kind of principled disciplines from the military boot camp, but however, we change it according to the demand of the workforce characteristics. And then we apply, we developed this EDI model. EDI model for training employees. Okay, that's the start of the modern employee training. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, mm, that's spread all around the world. And then, oh, yeah, all around the world, we, we use almost the same, same, same model you know, to design the training program and then workforce training. And then, this is any model. And Eddie Model is the father of the instructional system design, especially for the workforce, not, not boot camp, especially for the unskilled labor, unskilled the trade, unskilled employees. Okay? Because we have a lot of unskilled women. They they never they they never worked before at the work, and then we must transform them as a skilled worker as soon as possible, you know, to produce that weapon. That's all. it's urgent. Okay, and then we duplicate the kinds of the boot camp applications, and then we change that. We develop this. Okay, then almost all of the employee training program is based on this. First, we start with analyze the training needs. Do we need to train these people? Why? Okay. What is the employer's strategy training need? What is your strategy goal? What is your purpose? This training is necessary. Okay. Need assessment. Oh, that is a need assessment. Okay. Analyze the training need. And second, design the training program. Design, what is the goal of the training? Okay, and then we clarify the lesson plan. We clarify the lesson plan. And third, we develop the course. And what is the best way of the training to meet the goals of the training? Okay, so job A, the lecture material. And we implement the training. How to get, how to get people to engage in the training. Okay, and evaluate the course effectiveness assessment, how to measure the return of the training, course evaluation of the ROT. Okay, so these five steps are the A, D, A, D, D, I, E, AD model. AD model. Okay, so then maybe we can see the AD model's application. Okay. Good. That add the model, add the add the. We should. Foundation of the instructional design process is the ADDI process. ADDI is made up of five steps analyze, design, develop, implement and evaluate. The first step is analyze. In this first step, it's necessary to identify the problem that you'll be providing a solution for, as well as identifying learning goals, your learners and their needs, and the time frame for the entire development process. The second step is design. In this step, the learning goals are transformed into clear learning objectives. The content is decided upon by sketching out storyboards and wireframes. And scripts are written for any videos or voiceovers. The third step is develop. In this step, the storyboards and wireframes are used to help create the actual content that will be used in the module. It's at this stage when videos and voiceovers are recorded and edited as well. The fourth step is implement. In this step, the completed course or instructional activity is implemented in a classroom for students to use. This can be a pilot test or the actual launch or instructional activity. The fifth and final step is evaluate. In this step, data is collected and reviewed. This is where you find out if the problem you are trying to resolve is in fact resolved due to the 
course or instructional activity that you've implemented. It's at this stage that you might choose to revise your course or instructional activity due to the feedback and data from the implementation. The added process is widely used by instructional designers and is a useful process when creating almost any part of the curriculum, big or small. Each step is a critical part of the process and helps the next step be successful. Yep, so there is that. That is the model. Okay. Hmm. So then, yeah, let's roughly see this. And, hello. Hmm. Add model, and then we will see one by one. So, training and development is defined as the process of a systematically developing the work related knowledge or correlated knowledge and expertise in the people for the purpose of improving the performance, okay? And training and development of professionals with HRD are almost universally applied at every model process, the rooted of the instructional system design model developed by the US military in 1969. And the training for the performance system, TPS, developed by the Richard Swanson, integrated the leading Training and development process with the ADIM model for the purpose of improving the individual process and the organizational performance. That is the ADIM model. Okay, good. And then analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. These are the, these are the summaries of the ADIM model for the training employees. And we will go one by one a little. Okay, and then analyze. Okay, what should we analyze? And then we do strategy training need analysis. And then need assessment is the fundamental things we must do in order to analyze, okay? So then many training programs just done, just offered by the leadership with any consideration of the need. Yeah, because that looks that looks good, that looks beautiful, that looks working. Okay, and the CEO just to bring that training program and hey, please do it for our employees. Well, our all of our employees must know this. Get this training. It happens a lot. Okay, but please don't do that. Don't do. It. Please identify the need. Those your people need what? Need assessment. And current training need analysis, task analysis, talent management, loan analysis, and the performance analysis, performance appraisal, and then this interview is okay. So we need to know this. But many times, this most important process are frequently ignored by leadership because they have no idea of that. If what will happen if you do just to give a training program that is not relevant to the people's needs, wasting money is one thing, but however, that kills people's morale. Really. And our leaders, they do not listen to me and then they just give unnecessary training and that training is totally bad. I don't need it. Even though I don't need that. And then my manager just to want me to do that. Why? Mm, it happens. It happens a lot. So then many people are reluctant to participate in training program, learning program. Uh -huh. Please consider, is it necessary? Is it really need something? If not, don't try that. Okay. And design, absolutely. Setting the learning objectives, creating a motivation, learning environment, make the learning meaningful. Absolutely, make the skills transfer obvious and easy. We enforce the learning, ensure the transfer of the learning to the job. We need to design this kind of things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm, design, okay, learning objectives. And do you remember the, our syllabus? Syllabus? Do you remember our syllabus? 
why we have that kinds of the that structure, the syllabus. Where is our syllabus? Syllabus, syllabus, syllabus. Okay, here we go. Why we have this type of the syllabus? Okay, so this is our syllabus, and this is totally based on the instructional system design. Okay, very similar to the ADI. Okay, so that's a basic something. And here, course students learning objective, learning outcome. Okay, so then that is this part of the learning objectives. So we want to make this objective. We want to achieve this objective. Okay, that come from the design. Design. The goal of this course is to enable the students to appreciate the importance of the HRM. Okay, and then value of the HRM, know the element of the HRM functions, uh, issues and the solutions of the typical case problems and understand the global challenges and know the difference of the ma uh, managing HRs is a small and the enterprise will again be exposed to societal demand or something. Okay, this is our objective that come from the design. And then we have this instructional system design. That is the, our syllabus is totally based on our instructional system design principle. That is the reason why we have this syllabus. Okay, that syllabus come from instructional system design that is same to the EDI model. Okay. And then no matter what, in design process, we must set the goal of the learning. Goal of the learning, okay? And develop, develop the job aid and all slide, this kind of PowerPoint PPT, or the YouTube, or the video, or the materials, or the audio videos, print materials, simulation games, and the self-directed materials, no plan or something, okay, whatever. Develop, okay? Then next, we implement, we deliver our learning, we deliver our training, okay? For employees, okay, so we have this kind of the tools, this kind of the implementing the practices, okay? For the employees, on the job training, appreciatively, or apprenticeship training, informal learning, mentoring, coaching, job instructional training, JIT, lectures, classrooms, program training, Behavior, modeling, expert learning, and the audio visual based training, also uh, vestibule training simulation. That's a, that's a simulation game. And the electronic performance supporting system, video conferencing, computer based training, testing, simulated learning, lifelong learning, literacy training, team training, learning portals, virtual classroom, resource centers, and the mobile learning, social media. We have this kind of a lot of the training method. Okay? And then one of my wish recently, I would like that, uh, I would like to formulate the literacy training for artificial intelligence. Why? We can design this artificial intelligence literacy training program for our faculty members, staff members, and students. I want to do that. Why not? <laughs> I've heard of no, nobody told me I should do that. But I want to do that. Because I want to serve. And the four managers, OK? There is a strategy, talent development program, like a talent degree and a high potential program for management, okay? And the managerial OJT, OJ, on the job training, on the job training, and the executive coaches, and the action learning, case study, management of games, seminar, university related programs like the MBA, or executive MBA, okay? And the world brain, corporate university. Do you know that the McDonald University, McDonald University, Crontonville Center at the General Electric, and that is that, leadership development program. And moreover, one of the most popular manager training program is for retreats. Retreats. Sabbatical. We let them have one year off, or we let them have two or three months is of the global travel. Sure. 
and then in case several times, almost all, almost annually, and then we have a big conference in Hawaii. Or maybe you can think of okay, so let's make a retreat for all the all the high level of the managers or the executives. For example, okay, so we make a reservation at the hotel, hotel, okay, conference, hotel, and then for one week, all high rank executives and the managers they must come to the hotel, and we do not command anything. But we supply the nice food and nice environment and no act, no activities. We do not tell anything. Just enjoy life with your family. Okay. So we invite we invite all the, the all the important managers or executives to the hotel, and uh, possibly we can go to Hawaii, Bahamas, whatever, wherever. So that we might reach. Hey, hey, guys. You work hard. We appreciate that. And please come to the hotel and we serve everything you need. And no work, nothing. Okay, you can bring your friends, you can bring your family, you can bring your kids. Okay, for one week, you can enjoy your life in this hotel. Comfortable. 100% with full resort. Uh, and, and however, when we have that, what happens? They start to do. They start to do. Hey, I had a problem. Ah, okay, so how we can deal with that? Hey, there is, there is another man. Hey, hey, can we talk about something in a more informal way? I know, why don't you take care of another thing? Maybe playing in the swimming pool, the light, going to a nice pool. Wow, so somebody that your husband is going somewhere and that's right. informal. You cannot go anywhere. <laughs> Stay in the hotel conference. Then many problems solved. No training, <laughs> no training, no <laughs> But we believe in people. People love to solve the problems. And in the formal, in the formal situation, it's not easy to talk. However, in the informal, in, in the informal situation environment, we can. And then look at there, we supply, we supply baiju, biju, and the nice music. And hey, manager, hey, yeah, drink it together. And then we got drunk. And then, yeah, let's talk about that. We organization, we don't talk anything. <laughs> we just supply the liquid, we just supply the baiju, biju, soju. Okay. We do not talk anything, we do not comment anything. Okay. But they high length the office, high length the manager. <laughs> they solve that problem. So then personally. I need all these kind of things, okay? And what is the most effective, most productive training program for the high length managers? Don't do anything. Just let them have a freedom. Just let them have a open business. They, they love to work. Oh, oh. Uh, just let them have a situation, no training. No training is the best training. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That's our human nature, I think. That's a human nature. 
Okay, in the totally informal situation, in the totally casual situation, we can be more productive. So, okay, so that's your choice. <laughs> that's your choice. Who, yeah, who wants to participate in the class? Uh, that's totally sucks. Learning is totally painful. Uh, testing the assessment is totally painful. Don't do that. Okay? Let them have a chance to have a better solutions together in a more enjoyable, in a more positive situation. Okay? Now that, that's, that's my, that's my, under, that's my experience. I strongly recommend don't do anything, just let them have a retreat, sabbatical, day off. Okay? Peace. That's necessary. <laughs> That's the best solution to make the people work better. Make the people, people positive. Okay? Good. And the evaluation and the car practice, four levels of the model and the reaction, body, on the job behavior, research, and the return on training approach we have. However, this is the weakest part of the training. Whatever. Okay, this is a summary of the people development practice by process. Any model, analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate is a come from the uh, workplace training, workplace training during the World War II that directly come from the military boot camp. Okay, so then our training program design is directly come from the war army. Okay, then. We have this kind of edit models in order to design or to deliver the training program. Okay, so please remember we are dealing with adults, not kids. We cannot apply the pedagogy. Okay, we must respect the people's decision, personal differences as an adult. Okay, fully formed adult. Okay, good. So this is the way of the how we can train the individual. Individual, okay? Individual development is uh, like this. Add model training, something like this, okay? However, oh, as a business, okay? We sometimes, uh, many times we need to, we need to train, we need to change. We need to develop the organization, okay? Developing individual is one thing, but the developing the organization is different, okay? We will talk about that kind of how we can develop the organization later, okay? Good, so far, any question? So far, okay, okay, so far, okay. So then let's have a summer, let's have a lunch break and then we will, we will do it again. Uh, we will start again at 1 p.m., okay? And long story short, please let them have a freedom to learn by themselves, <laughs> make them positive, retreat, day off, week off, nice, treat the nice. That is the best training, right? Personally. Okay, good. That's it. And I will see you in the afternoon.